Year 12, The Rule of Dr. Zero. Prologue, 1062. The Road from Kinmelville to Boat Murdered. Well, I finally arrived on the first of granite. An appropriate time to begin. I swear I'll never utter the phrase, Ha! I can run a fortress better than those bumpkins, with an earshot of the Dwarven Realm Expansion Minister again, so long as I live. I clambered to the top of the hill just west of the infamous boat murdered as the sun rose over the mountain peaks within which it slept. My first thoughts were of elation. The majestic purple peaks, covered with a noble cap of snow as streamers of wind-blown snow trailed off, like a woman waving her scarf at a departing lover. Then, as I looked down excitedly, my mood turned to one of dismay. The winter snows had receded already down here, and the scene was... was horrendous. The earth, the trees, the very rock face of the mountain was scorched and burnt. Feeble plants poked through the ash and soot in between the piles of... piles of... What was this? I moved off the paved road to investigate piles and piles of armor and weapons, laying around as if their diminutive owners simply crumbled to ash. Dogs and cats picked through the debris, hunting small vermin. I turned to look back. Perhaps I could make the journey back to Kinmel Bill before... No, no, it was too late. I was being hailed by a dwarf in rags and tatters. The dwarf hailing me was Olin, the broker, his once noble pigtail clothes hanging in scraps from his limbs, standing in pools of dried vomit. He casually kicked at what looked like a half-digested core of a plump helmet. He greeted me with a sense of urgency. Apparently there had been an accident. Yes, he put his fingers in the air and drew the quotes and that one of the former rulers was dead. And now, the most recent regent had simply walked off the job the day before and began happily carving. They were without anyone to lead them. I asked for a tour that became more and more disturbing as time went on. He explained their history, the sieges, the elephants, the demons. I wondered again, not for the first time, if I could escape away into the night. Then it happened. A miner ran up to me, surrounded by cats. Oh, Sarah, you must help, she cried. Sankus has all of them butchered. Um, calm down, um, ma'am, I said, trying not to eye her breasts that were practically hanging out of her tattered clothes. The cats, oh, God, they'll kill them, she cried and ran off. To make a long story short, I reviewed the last orders of Emperor Sankus and saw that several cats had been listed in the To Butcher book. It seemed a simple mistake as there was no record of cat meat being stockpiled and the cat's entries into the ledger appeared in between the cattle and horses. I struck them from the record and proceeded to review the rest of the fortress. It seems that Mystic Mongol had met an untimely end after flinging himself into the river. I could see why, after I'd looked around some more, the fortress was a wreck. There were also murmurs of Sankas working on some kind of shoving autonomaton, which I dismissed as stories brought on by a lack of drink. Well, there is indeed a lot of work to do here, which I should get to. The first order of business is to get a farm up and running. Seems the only food stores are a bunch of cow and horse meat that hasn't even been cooked yet, and unprocessed fat. I've never been one for sashimi, so that will need to change. Between having some people forage for spring berries and plants, and getting the farms running again, I feel that my associate's degree in subterranean food services will not go to waste. The one troubling thing, though, is that nobody seems to know exactly where the lever for the farm's floodgates is. You do have one, right? I mean, I see the floodgates right over there. Olin nodded enthusiastically and said, Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I think so, and began to scurry off without telling me. He stopped, turned, and said, Oh, speaking of levers, in case of emergency, there are some double-key dwarven doomsday levers off to the north. What kind of emergencies? Oh, you know, the usual. Sieges, goblins, elephants, well, sieges, goblins, and elephants mostly. But the elephants... Oh, gods, the elephants! See, sometimes I catch them. He lowered his voice to a conspiratorial tone. You can hear them in the night, 
the trumpeting, the trumpeting. And then he screamed and ran off. And oh, did I find the elephants, at least five of them, in cages, looking at me murderously. Anyway, this uh, should be interesting. Did you know Boat Murdered boasts the youngest legendary stone carver? Doran Dosterball, child, creator of Rungok Bakban, is a legendary stone crafter. And some nobles with some rather, uh, strange recreational tastes. Ost Dodoglaltur, Ost Clasp Covered, demands a rope reed item in their bedroom. I leave you with some examples of what Emperor Sankus has engraved. I leave it up to you to examine his work in the titles to decide on what may have happened to Mystic Mongol, my predecessor. Ibasti Zen, The Stunted Trickery. Engraved on the wall is a masterfully designed image of a dwarf by Emperor Sankus Gottenbomrik. The dwarf is burning. Zeller Sostet, The Prime Weevils. Engraved on the wall is an exceptionally designed image of a dwarf and a frog demon by Emperor Sankus Gottenbomrek. The frog demon is striking down the dwarf. Roder Bangus, the bald weasel. Engraved on the wall is an exceptionally designed image of a dwarf by Emperor Sankus Gottenbomrek. The dwarf is burning. Cirque Beb, the random sucker. Engraved on the wall is an exceptionally designed image of a dwarf and a frog demon by Emperor Sankus Gottenbomrek. The frog demon is striking down the dwarf. Lysid Vitek, The Clashes of Targeting. Engraved on the floor is a masterfully designed image of a dwarf and toads by Emperor Sankus Gottenbomrek. The dwarf is surrounded by the toads. Maybe I need to increase the royal guard. Boat Murder. 1062, spring. Well, after a night's sleep, not so good, Olin was right, you can hear those damned elephants all over the fortress, I was ready to take on the full responsibilities of the job. I found out that the cat lady's name is Kib. After looking through the records, I find she has no fewer than 20 cats. That's 8% of all the animals in the fortress and 30% of all the cats. I really don't know what to say about that, but I've ordered another 20 bags of sand to be collected. I don't want those things shitting all over the place. Also, in looking over the records, I see the nobles comprise 31% of all the dwarves. Seems that a lot of dwarves have died to various invasions, attacks, disasters, and accidents. I count 33 coffins, but I don't think they're all full. There are also four corpses listed in the fortress's assets. I don't want to, but I should look into that eventually and ensure that they aren't dwarven. Let it be shown that there is one dwarf currently incarcerated in the prison, one Erith Yuriskeskal, recruit, for violation of a production order. I don't recall a lot of my cavern production management systems class, but I'm pretty sure the military wasn't expected to produce anything but dead bodies. I was going to pardon her, but she only has three days left and she seems content anyways. I guess I shouldn't seem too easy on crime or whatever it is she did to piss someone off. Note to self. Get farms working. Get someone to gather plants. Talk to some of these nobles outside my door complaining about not having their needs met. Get some clothes on these people. First thing as I come out the door, I get the metalsmiths complaining that they have orders for pig iron and no limestone. They're quite annoyed by it. I assured them that I'd get someone to cut some limes right away if they keep the pigs restrained. It seemed to quiet them down, but they walked away with some strange looks on their faces. They probably aren't used to such responsiveness. In looking for the lever to the farm, I found something that might be it nearby. It might also flood the siege workshop, but I'm not exactly sure why that would be a good thing. There are channels, so the fortress should be safe. But in looking for someone to pull the thing, my academia career has left me a little scrawny and these levers appear to weigh about 200 pounds, I notice that there are no peasants. Not one. Given the high percentage of nobles, I'm beginning to suspect something is amiss around here. The good news is, I'm pretty sure I found the dwarven doomsday lever, which is thankfully nowhere near the farms. Although I wouldn't put something like that past these people. Well, sure enough, it flooded the siege workshop. Oh well.
I might have to just build a new lever unless I can find it soon. I finally found the lever. There was a cow standing over it. <sighs> anyway, this is great news because that means we will soon have some mud to till. I've also begun to go over the standing work orders and try to rearrange them according to Dworkus's underground rules of productivity. I've gotten through the farmers now and normalized their work queues. I'd like to get the other jobs stable, like getting the metalsmiths doing something. Speaking of that, I took a peek in my unused metalsmithing for dummies book and found out what pig iron is. Boys, my face red. I'll have to play it off like it was a joke when I see the metalsmiths next. Another interesting note. The records appear to be incorrect. I'll have to explain Thidbull's law of inventory management at the next staff meeting. It seems we have almost 20 elephants in cages. Man, the way they look at me when I did the hand count is creepy. Fifth of Granite. Ah, things are going just like they taught me in Ken Bill Community College. The jobs are normalized, although some doors have yet to really get into their new streamlined roles, but now the only idler is the wounded farmer. I've also begun to order up some more warhounds, as the military presence, or lack thereof, is a bit scary. Ninth of Granite. A goblin snatcher picked the wrong place to approach the fortress. An elven caravan arrives. I can't wait to see our noble neighbors. I've never seen an elf. Perhaps they brought us some elven delicacies or wine. And they brought a friend! An elven noble from Afyadele has arrived. And with that, I decided to take a quick nap before the elves arrive. Hooray, elves! I want to be well rested for them. Stark Raving Mad posted, I love that boat murder has turned into some sort of horrendous evil eyesore on the continent. I'm picturing groups of hardy adventurers gearing up to assault the place just based on the barren ash and skeleton-filled landscape in front of it. Also, I love that the place has become so complex and messy that literally no one knows how everything works anymore. The part where there's a lever to flood the siege workshop for no apparent reason really cracked me up. Spring, 17th of Granite, 1062. Just a quick note before I get something to eat. The elven noble at first seemed very polite. The Baron Bar Tithlethaban meets with the elf diplomat Lema Serelaseyi. Greetings from the woodland. We have much to discuss. But then he turned out to be kind of a jerk. I mean, who does he think he is, coming in here and telling us we can't cut down some bedraggled, scorched, leafless trees? Still, 100 trees would be plenty, and we don't really need that much wood. I resisted the urge to order all the trees clear-cut, and remembered my environmental science and cross-cultural sensitivity training, and told him that it sounded reasonable. We elves are partial in particular to the trees in the forest surrounding your lands. Although we are loath to spare a single branch to your senseless slaughter, we are willing to ask that you cap your tree fells at one hundred until we next meet. I will try to return next year as I am able. Then a dwarf came in and said that the merchants were ready. I excused myself and rushed to the depot. Oh, joy. Rope. Cloth. At least those five berries can be brewed into something good. Well, it's time to talk with the tall, pointy-eared fellow some more over some plump helmet. The only one we have. I hope he chokes on it, um, rather, enjoys it. Spring, 19th of Granite, 1062. After a nice meal, the elf noble was a little more understanding, if still rude. We can part with at most 146 trees, butcher. Finally, we came to an agreement, 146 trees, which should be plenty as I only planned on using them for beds anyway. We finally bid each other farewell, and good riddance. Lema Serelaseyi says, Although we do not always see eye to eye, huh. I bid you farewell. May you some day embrace nature as you embrace the rocks and the mud. Hey, was that a short joke? 
still grumbling after the elves, I decided to channel my frustration to good use. I finally sat down with the nobles who had been, not so patiently, trying to talk to me. I assigned some tables and beds in the noble barracks and made some of them happy. I also ordered the excavation of some new tombs, which should shut them up, but satisfy them finally. Then after that, I'll have the miners start excavating out more ore. We seem to be running a little low on certain things, tin, bronze, and brass specifically. I've also told the metalsmiths to forget my little joke and start smelting ore. I don't think they bought it, but they are smelting, so whatever. Spring, 27th of Granite, 1062. Things are humming along. I noticed that Rimtar Uramid wasn't doing the siege operating I'd ordered her to do. After tracking her down, I found her in jail. Apparently, it's not good to be the only jeweler with 19 nobles yelling for goods made out of blue diamonds and stuff we don't even have in stock. Spring, the 4th of Slate. I'm told a fired pimp has sprung from a bush. I don't even know what that means. It attacked a cow, but then was caught in a cage trap while going after the elephants. Oh, and I've looked it up in Preter's Field Guide to the Underworld Denizens. It's a fire imp. Man, the country accents are hard to understand. I wonder if I can tame this thing. Also today, some immigrants arrived. Excellent, we need more strong backs. Uh, great, a captain of the guard... A count, a countess consort, a recruit, two peasants, a farmer, a mechanic, and a fisher dwarf. That's all we needed. More snooty nobles around. Oh, listen to me. I'm beginning to sound like a long-timer. Just gets so tiresome catering to every whim. Spring, the 26th of Slate. Eid, the baroness consort, has given birth to a baby girl. Just what we need. More noble larva. End of spring notes. Well, my first spring in Boat Murdered has come to a quiet close. I must say it turned out to be quite pleasant. I've been working on getting some more tombs set up for the new nobles, and if someone would ever haul the coffins, they'd all be set. I've also been concentrating on getting food production stable, getting some of this fat rendered and cooked up, and getting some more metal bars stockpiled. I must say, I don't know why everyone tells tales of Boat Murdered being so brutal. I think it's been fun so far. I'm sure the tales are just fables made up to scare us in the capital. Summer, the first of Hematite. I got notice that we lost a war dog in a macaque raid. Apparently, we, he managed to tear two apart, but was struck down in turn. The macaques took off with some of the goblin garbage outside. What a waste. The dog, that is. If they can come back and take it all for all I care. Also, I finally seen little Ilral, the Baroness Consort's little girl. Good to see she's drinking lots of beer like any other healthy dwarven baby. I wonder if she'll grow up to be a noble or if she'll be useful. Oh, there I go again. Ilral Ogenthicut, Ilral Your Book, Baby, has been quite content lately. She was disgusted by a miasma lately. She likes shale, mule leather, the color cardinal, plate mail, tables, and ballista arrows. When possible, she prefers to consume dwarven beer. She absolutely detests flies. She needs alcohol to get through the working day. Tenth of Hematite. The human caravan and trade noble arrived today. Here's to hoping they'll be more helpful than the elves. Yay, the humans have brought wagons literally stuffed with meat. Yay for humans. Summer, twelfth of Malachite. I finalized a deal with the humans asking for more meat in exchange for these items. Note to former rulers. Trade this stuff. Spears, short swords, and battle axes. Okay, these dwarves have some kind of serious learning deficiency. I traded for 600 units of meat. I told four different dwarves to only haul food, and it's still all rotted in the trade depot. Good gods, these people have some kind of inborn desire to starve to death. Fourth of Galena. Well, former ruler Sankus has suddenly decided to try and drink out of the lava river. I've tried to talk him out of it by changing his jobs and telling him to join the military and then relieving him, but nothing seems to work. I don't think this will end well. Well, summer was uneventful. I've tried to get Sankus in a mood improvement program I like to call Up With Yourself, but he keeps moping by the lava. How sad. Autumn's goals will be to continue getting a decent food stockpile built up. Winter, 1062. 
Well, I would surely lose a grade point or two for not keeping a journal this whole time were I back in school, but to tell the truth, I really didn't need to. Winter's now over, and I'm now about to welcome my replacement. I have to say, aside from the dwarves who live here being a little... special, this experience has been quite enjoyable. I'd like to recap my current projects, but first let's catch up. This is what our stocks looked like in the beginning of winter. We had some kobolds try and sneak in and pilfer items, but the dogs quickly sniffed them out and ripped them apart. I ordered the east side of the river dug out as far north as the mountain range went. This should make foraging for berries and plants much easier in the spring. Meanwhile, the citizens insisted on replacing that dried vomit that welcomes every visitor. And rather than clean up the cobalt mess, everyone would rather squish their toes in the gore and spread it all over. Also, you'll notice that Ede, the Baroness Consort, has had another girl. Well, at least she's good for something, after all. And this is the stocks at the end of the year. All in all, I had a splendid time. I'm quite sure that all the horrible stories are nothing more than stories, made up to scare off or impress those of us in the capital. I've decided to take it easy now that I've earned a break and I'm taking up fishing. I think it'll be a relaxing way to pass the time. Well, as long as someone decides to finally clear up the mess in the halls. Oh yeah, some notes and unfinished business. Sankus finally listened to reason and stopped trying to drink out of the lava river. He's given up the disturbing engraving for the time being and is busying himself making some fine furniture. I must say, he's quite good. All of the detail in some of the tables he's made are, uh, well... Let's just not mention them. There's a mechanic named Ost that is married to the guildmaster, I think, who's wounded. I'm not sure from what, but he, Ost, won't leave her side, no matter what you tell him to do. It's touching, if not a little frustrating. I've ordered all the elephants tamed, but for some reason the trappers refuse to train any more war dogs, and I can't fathom why. They keep saying there are no dogs to train, but I'm practically tripping over dogs right now. I think that does it. Oh, I've also set up a modest private quarters for myself, but the bedroom furniture hasn't arrived yet. If someone can mark my assignment when the hauling is done, I'd appreciate it. It's just north of the latest low-rent bedroom complex that I completed, just west of the river and south of the main drag. I'd do it myself, but, well, I'm gone fishing. 